Welcome to another episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, we're talking about transportation again today. You might remember a while ago we did uh, that electric bus. Well, this is another electric bus, but it's a little bit different because you can get four of these electric buses for the price of that other electric bus. Why? Well, let's find out. Let's leave. Macy Nassadi, am I saying that right? Yeah, sure okay. you are. Okay, now you're the president of... Uh, vice president. Vice president. Oh, geez, why couldn't we get the president? We got the vice president. Cut. It's not all over again. No, no, no. So, t so tell me what we have here. What we have here is a 1996 new flyer bus, okay. American-built, tested bus okay. that uh, we recycled, remanufactured, reused, and we converted over to electric okay. technology. And our goal was to get a bus that gets out to about 120 miles. This is our first effort at it. It's getting about 90 miles. Okay. And we've got some ideas that will get us to 120 here real soon. So follow me. What they do is they buy old worn out buses. Right. Uh, now I imagine the chassis and the bodies are fine. The part that wears out is the drivetrain. Drivetrain. So you buy these buses for what, a couple of thousand dollars? Uh, it varies. It yeah, but, but cheap. But cheap. <clears throat> and what, you throw, you throw away the drivetrain you convert them to electric, right. so you save the manufacturing of the body, right. which it seems pretty clever. How hard is it to convert it to electric? Is it a huge deal? Well, if our competitors are listening, yes, it's terribly hard. You yeah. know, it's, uh, <laughs> but no, well, obviously a lot of technology that we've had right. to work with and develop, but uh, it's a process like anything else. It's and this electric bus will go a whole shift of, of a regular bus? It will go, depending on the transit system. What yeah. we're targeting is transit systems right now that have daily routes that are 100 miles or less. Right. And this will accomplish that mission without any in-between charging or any... And most cities are less than 100 miles a, a day, A lot right? of, about 80% of the transit have routes. Because you, go, you go two miles, right. the door opens, the door opens again. That's that really well. my impression of yeah. the bus. That's the door opening. There you go. You know, okay, very cool. So you use, how big an electric motor do you run in this? Uh, Size-wise or horsepower? Uh, well, both, I guess. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's about that big around and about right. that long, uh, but it's about 170 horsepower, but uh, about 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, that's and the, the torque's killer, right it? there. And you've right. got, obviously, direct gearing. There's no transmission. No transmission. You know, we've said this a bunch of times. In the beginning of the 19th century, <clears throat> they really thought electricity was the best way to power an automobile. Certainly, uh, Dr. Porsche did, and his first car was an electric car. But then the internal combustion came along and rolls, explodes, and makes noise, and, and they're a lot of fun as well. You know, I've got a Chevy Volt, and I've got 23,000 miles on it, and I've used maybe 16, 18 gallons of gas. So it's, it's pretty amazing. We drove the Tesla, that was amazing. And this is the next step, public transportation. Is there much maintenance with your electric motor? Virtually none. Virtually yeah. none. You get rid of oil changes. You, even right. the daily grind of checking fluids, topping them off. Yeah. Filters you don't have to dispose of, waste oil you don't have to haul away, right. uh, oil changes you don't have to do. We, we should double the brake life because of the retarding that okay. the electric system naturally Now, does this regen in. at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does absolutely. regen, okay. Yeah. And that part of it helps the braking process, okay. so it saves brake So you're life. not stepping on the brake, you just get off the gas and... It whoosh, starts slowing itself down. Slows it down yeah. and it puts more electricity back. Charges How big a, is it a lithium-ion battery? Lithium-iron faucet. Oh, okay. Lithium-iron okay. phosphate. Right okay. Now. Okay, and how, how, how many battery packs is that? There's uh, 12 on this bus. Okay. There's 12 packs. Okay, 12 yeah. packs for how many volts? Uh, well, total is 360 volts. 360, 360 okay. 360 and uh, about 213 kilowatt hours. Okay, because I've got my little 1909 Baker Electric next door, and that's 78 volts. Right. So it's funny that this huge giant bus is really only three times the voltage, the voltage right. of my little 1909. Right. So that, sh that shows you how much, uh, how powerful electricity can be. Right. So, this is, so this is basically just a 15 or 20 year old bus that right. would be sitting in a scrap yard. Right. And then you, you recondition them. Right. Now how about from a uh, safety standpoint and all that kind of stuff? Well, it's still the same bus basically in right. terms of brakes, suspension, right. all that. Uh, we still do the same safety testing. We do brake deceleration testing and right, document right. all that and make sure that the air systems are all FMVSS compliant in terms of the air buildup yeah. and storage time. So it's a perfectly safe bus. And of course, being an electric bus, there's no shifting of any kind. No so it's a little load off the driver. How about, and you're still able to run air conditioning and everything? Yeah, yeah. it's got 80,000 BTU of air conditioning, wow. just like its counterpart, okay. diesel or CNG. And the heat pumps for the winter. Okay. So. Now, is this, is this able to cool as well as a Diesel wood air conditioner? Yeah, absolutely. same thing. Okay. Absolutely. And it doesn't drain a whole lot of. No. Wow. No. 
The range we're getting is what they see on full time. Okay, yeah. okay. So. Well, I mean, it, it looks like a brand new bus. And the last electric bus we did, which was brand new, cost about $2 million, and you can do, what, four of these? About four of those for that. Wow, yeah. so yeah. that's gotta be a tremendous savings. It's, it's getting people's attention, and that was, our, that was our whole intent. We thought that our company felt like to make this commercially viable, to get people buying them so we can start making an impact on yeah. cutting down our fuel consumption and cleaning up air, you had to get to a price point it was competitive yeah. with a diesel or a CNG bus. So let's say I'm a municipality or a town, I've got all these old buses. Can I give them to you to convert or do you have to physically buy them and then sell them back no, to the they city? They can absolutely give them to us to convert. Okay, yeah. and then, oh I see. And that's what our first customer's done, Ben Franklin okay. Transit up in Washington. Okay. And the interesting thing is, this is one electric company that did it without government money. I know right. Tesla and Fisker and so many of the electrics now, even General Motors with the Volt, they took, they took money, taxpayer money, to convert it, which gets uh, people all upset because, hey, that's private business. But, but you guys are all self-funded. Self-funded. Right? This okay. is all done out of our own money. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's pretty good. So you got a load of investors. You convince them of this idea? Nope. Just, our, our, just our own money. Just wow. our own corporation's money. No oh. investors, no outside, wow. nothing. So that's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty, now, what else, what else do you need to show us here? Anything? Well, I think the, the rest of the bus looks like the rest of the bus, but the, the engine compartment's kind of sexy. Yeah, well, let's take a look at the engine compartment. Okay. okay. Right. I imagine it's a lot smaller, right? It is. So, so show me what we have here. That looks like a main switch and an off switch Yeah, there. that's your basic main control panel with the voltage running into it. This is it. your drive engine here? These are batteries. Oh, those are batteries. Those, those okay. two are batteries. Those two are batteries. That's a battery. Okay. The drive motor is in that box. We have to box it just so we can run some forced air for a little bit of cooling. Right, through. right, yeah. Uh, motor inverter, that does all the talking to the motor, takes the gotcha. throttle input and decides how much and how many volts is it? This whole thing will be 360. 360, okay, very good, very yeah. good. Yeah, like you say, nice and clean, and there's no maintenance, there's nothing to do, no, is there? nothing to do. They, yeah. well, the first time we give it to a transit to use as a demo, the guys come out and at the end of a shift, they open the, and they're ready to check oil or yeah, check yeah. the tranny fluid or look at the coolant level, and they realize, yeah. hey, we just need to wash it and plug it in. Yeah, nothing and to do nothing here. Nothing to do. Okay. Now, is this battery heated and cooled? The battery's all ambient. Oh, okay. Oh, ambient yeah. temperature. Ambient okay. Temperature. Okay. Yeah. So I imagine in colder climates it might be a little trickier. Uh, well, we haven't we haven't been challenged with anything so far. Yeah. Yeah. But it gets hot here in California. Right. Well, we um, ran it during the summer in Palm Springs. Yeah. No problem. No problems. Okay. It, it cooled. People got on and off of it. Yeah. And we're very happy with it. Amazed at how quiet it is. We've had full standing passenger loads on this thing and cool. All people around and like I said, Gardena's been running it for two months and just they can't say enough good things about yeah. it. Yeah, well it's very pretty. Yeah. This is the future and it's it's fascinating to see how many times you've been stuck behind a bus. <coughs> That's right. like everybody's worst nightmare, especially when you're a little car. Especially an open car like right. I like to drive. Right. So no, this is the this is the future. And it's nice to see the future sort of integrated with the past. This is a uh, Looks like about a 20-year-old bumper on there. Well, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, it's the ultimate recycling. Because once these buses, once the, the, the original bus wears out, they're pretty much useless, aren't they? If we don't step in and do something, they end up in a, in a landfill. In a landfill. They end up in a shredder with the yeah. steel being shipped overseas gotcha, to compete gotcha. with us. Yeah. Versus saving the natural resource that would go into making a new bus saving the landfill space this bus would have taken, yeah. recycling and putting it back on the road. It's a perfectly good bus. This bus will run another 12 years. So this would be your, lack of a better word, your gas fill. This you is, plug it in here, right? Right, just flip All that. Right, I flip that, okay. There and, you go. And you plug in and you go, and you plug yeah. into what, 240 or? 480, 100 amp. Oh, 480, 100 amp. Yeah. So, you, so you charge up how quickly? Four hours. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. And how quickly would that charge like a Chevy Volt about? Uh, 20 minutes? About 20 minutes. <laughs> you might fry the battery. You might yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Well, 480 volt, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And I imagine eventually one day when we get to the point where you have solar panels at the charging station, uh, that will sort I'm of... I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Because the next four buses that we've applied to, to uh, have mm -hmm. customers have signed up for are with a grant from the California Energy Commission where they want us to actually work with them to build solar panels, right. battery banks, right. and be off-grid charging. Yeah, that would and, be and uh, we're would really be good. excited about that because there's your ultimate yeah. renewable. Yeah. Let's see what she so, does. Yeah. As you can see, we picked up a few people on the ride. So Jay, one of the things we're really excited about, if I can volunteer this, is yeah. Ben Franklin Transit up in the Pasco, Richland, Kennewick area yeah. has uh, stepped up and bought one of these. And they're going to run it on a 80-mile uh, route. That's that's a full-day shift for them. Right. 
Um, they're excited because their cost per kilowatt hour, because of all the renewable energy they generate up there, is two cents wow. per kilowatt hour. So their payback on this bus is about two years. And what's the top speed on a vehicle like this, about 55? This, this would get about 55. Yeah. And this, this particular bus is geared for the city, so right. we could go 75 if we wanted to raise the gearing a little right. bit. But there's really no point. But I that. imagine then you're really sucking down electricity. And, and you're, yeah. And you're going faster in this bus should really go. Is there no range benefit to having a transmission with an electric motor? Uh, you know, Tesla originally had a, a two-speed and it, it couldn't take the torque and right. the power of the electric right. engine. So they just went to the direct Single, drive. Right. But uh, is that the next thing to happen with electricity? Transmissions that can take the torque, so or it doesn't matter with the electric engine not moving. You're, you know, a transmission becomes a point of loss. Yeah. So our goal was to not have one, and what right. we did is we worked with this motor is actually a dual wound motor, so it's got a high and a low winding. Gotcha. So at about 30 miles an hour, you'll feel just a little bit of a shudder in the bus as, it, right. as the motor shifts itself into the high winding. Yeah. So it's a delta Y. And that gets rid of the transmission and another wear item, and a, yeah. and a transmission by nature has to have fluid in it, so you got yeah. you don't get so all the benefits of no fluid changes. What does Regen give you on something like this? Maybe five, six percent, or more at the end of no, the day? No, that's about what we're thinking. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we're still testing and doing calculations to try to determine that number more yeah. precisely. So we've been running this bus since May. Another really cool thing is uh, we, were, we were talking about mean time between failures, which is something that the Federal Transit Administration judges transit systems on, is yeah. what the average time between bus failures is. So far, in six months, we've had zero failures on this bus. And what constitutes a bus failure? Does that mean unable to... Uh, unable to continue its route. Okay. Lithium-ion batteries in cars, you want to keep them between 20% and 80%. You don't want to run it all the way down, do you? Right. We want to, okay. You want to cut it out at about 20%. Right. Okay. And, uh, and then condition them back up to 100 And uh, We've got a very sophisticated battery management system here that looks at every single cell for voltage and temperature and then constantly works towards balancing everything out. So even when the system is down and the bus is shut off and parked overnight, the battery management system is continuously balancing yeah. the loads. And the real benefit too is if we can deliver a bus to transit system that reduces their maintenance needs, reduces yeah. their uh, sure. cost of maintenance and fluids and all that, they can concentrate more resources on getting people where they need to go. Right. They can add buses, they can put more efficient routes together. Uh, there's all sorts of things that come from being able to divert their resources to transportation, getting people around. Well, it's a big question is, will it do a burnout? The answer is no, <laughs> no it won't do a burnout. But Macy, we'll thank you very much. Jay, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a, a pleasure. little glimpse of the future. It's something a little different. We do supercars. We like to do all kinds of transportation on, the, on this website. And as we said before, you know, the more electric vehicles there are out there, the more gasoline for the rest of us to enjoy our Hemi Kudas and all those kind of cars. And I think that's a really a legitimate argument. So, hey, thanks for thanks, showing Shane. us a little glimpse of the future. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. It. Thank you.